Now, at the same time that a hole is developing, which geologists call the paradox basin, there's mountain range that was pushing up to the northeast of that. So I'm going to pile the sand up on that side. And it was a pretty mountain range. It's um, called the Unpopular Uplift of the Ancestral Rocky Mountains. They actually suspect that it might have been higher than Mount Everest at one point. This is pretty fun, actually. <laughs> Need some help? <laughs> so that's kind of what it looked like here, around 320 million years ago. And if you fill that in, with a geologic recreation, you kind of have an idea of what this area was really going through. Um, this is the geologic recreation that I'm going to show you. It was taken, or uh, hypothesis of what it looked like here 320 million years ago. Where the big hole is that I drew and where the mountain range is located and where Utah and where Arches National Park would be located in reference to those. That's, that's Utah. Yeah, definitely, huh? <laughs> You know that ocean, the coast of the ocean would be practically through the center of the state, huh? You know that ocean is pretty rocky, it's a green body. So if you kind of draw a line there, and what they think would happen is the, the ocean level would rise sometimes, would spill over that narrow piece of land and fill up that big basin with seawater. And then it would retreat and the water would become landlocked in that section. So essentially, because of that, we were actually changing temperature quite rapidly. The continental drift were drifting to our current location, or much further south at the time. The water would start to evaporate out of that big hole. And eventually it would evaporate all, all, all together. And what happens if you leave a glass of salt water on the kitchen table you know, for a couple weeks? That's salt. Yeah, layer of salt in the bottom of the glass afterwards, right? So essentially, every time that happened, it left a layer of salt down there. And so they've actually taken geologic core samples of this basin and they've measured the, the different layers of salt down there. There are 29 separate layers of salt, indicating the ocean probably flooded that region at least 29 separate times. And you measure the depth of that, and in the center of the basin, and actually on average, it's between eight to 10,000 feet thick. So just a huge deposit of salt down to the bottom of this hole. So I'm going to put a little sand back in the hole. This is going to give you an idea that this hole is going to fill up over time. And the first layer that we have being deposited down there that's really quite significant is this huge layer of salt. And then it starts to be covered up by all, all the other layers that you see. The next one being the Hanukkah Trail Hole. And that's a limestone layer. So it's actually a, a time period when this area was again covered by some kind of shallow sea. So this is actually an interesting layer to look at because you see shells and crinoids and other sea living, living organisms in that layer. Because you're a little bit more sand in the hole there. Then we have a real thick layer. That's called the Cutler Group. And this is a time period when we're receiving a lot of erosion off to Uncompadre uplift to our northeast. So essentially, sediments were getting washed down off the mountain as the mountain kind of break down. It was helping to fill that hole back. And, you know, eventually most of that mountain actually erodes away. You only see remnants of it there today. Um, and if you look at the depth of the sediment that eroded off the mountain, you of course find much thicker sediments here closest to the foothills. And they can this out quite a bit. That's going to be important to sediment back. <laughs> then we have the Mancopi Formation. And during this time period, if we could travel back in time, we would have noticed the whole area would have been covered by very shallow tidal flats. So we have mudstones, silts, and shales being deposited over the last layer. Then we have something called the Chinle Formation. This is a stream and river deposit. And by looking at the floodplains that were deposited by those rivers, we can actually tell that those Rivers were essentially flowing in from somewhere where Arizona lies today. And that essentially was taking sediments and you know, depositing the other side of the basin as well, helping to fill up the other side. Then we have uh, a time period when it's a lot drier. And that's when the Wingate sandstone was deposited. And essentially, um, it might have looked like the Sahara Desert looks like the Andes. We had a lot of strong winds, it's probably broke blowing in sand off the coat area, <laughs> all that sand going in. And uh, it was in the form of dunes at one time, and then as water percolated down through those layers, 
carrying minerals, it solidified or cemented the sand grains in the sand and made the rock that you can see up there today. This layer, specifically in the park, you can see it above the visitor center. So if you remember driving up from the road, looking across Highway 191, you notice this big rock ridge on the other side of the road. Follow that to the top, and the very top of that ridge, it looks like a sheer cliff. That's the Wingate Sandstone. It's actually quite prevalent here. Um, you can see it along the river road, or up in Canyonlands, and the island in the sky. It's a huge deposit. And then also the wedding. We have big trees growing here. All kinds of water. Um, dinosaurs roaming around at that time. So this is actually a real interesting layer to study as well. There are bones and prints and trees actually in this layer. And let's try again. And if you remember driving up the road and uh, maybe you stopped and looked out the window of the petrified dunes, you might have seen some of the Navajo sandstone. Kind of a stone. And there, I think that's a really neat spot because if you look out towards the mountains, you can still see the rolling formation of the dunes the same way it was deposited here, you know, a couple hundred million years ago. And then if you look around us, all of this rock that you see standing up around us here, that's called the Entrada sandstone. And there's a couple different layers of Entrada, which I'll point out a little bit later. This is essentially remnants of a beach. 